coffee, Rod? Thanks. Norm? Well, I've got some icebox cookies. Somebody might get hungry. It's like we're in some kind of a nightmare. Like we're in quicksand and we can't run. And we're all in it. We were reaching out to Anne to try and stop it from happening. Yeah, well, we didn't reach hard enough. And there are some who didn't reach at all. You mean Lee Weber? You know, he never made a secret of disliking Anne. As a matter of fact, he was pretty wide open about it. When Anne left that house today, you should have seen the look on my grandfather's face. And Mrs. Cord. Hey, wait a minute, Rod. You can't blame them for what happened. You can't hold them responsible. Oh, can't I? You weren't there. You didn't see Anne leave our little homestead on the hill. You didn't see the look on her face. I tell you, she ran from that house. Well, I still don't understand. Why'd they clam up? Why'd Grandfather go along with it? If Mrs. Court had a long-lost daughter, why would he care if it came out in the open? If he had a good answer to that, you think I'd be here now? Oh, he's got one, all right. One that works in that uh, world that he lives in, that devious world. Well, I don't want to be a part of that world anymore. You can stay here as long as you like. You don't mind sleeping on the couch. I'm not sure he really wants to abandon the old homestead. Look now, wait a minute. You were the one who said we had to stick together. That we, we didn't need anybody. I said you were wrong. Well, we have been cut off. All of us. Now we're all alone. And I like it that way. You sure blow hot and cold. I got the feeling you kind of like the old man. Look, Anne's dead. But you can't blame him for that. Not seriously. Well, sure, we feel bad about Stephen and Anne. But they're not part of our family. No, she wasn't part of our family. But who was she really, Norm? Was she simply Stephen's sister? Or is there more to it than that? And why does my grandfather and, and Mrs. Cord sit on this secret all these years? I tell you, there's more to it. There's something missing. Like what? I don't know. But what if we find out? What if we find out and it hits us? You'll still be brothers. We all just stick together, that's all. Is it that simple? And will it be enough? Well, good morning, Anna. Huh. Have you got it all figured out? A wise man once said, Decisions made at dark, dissolve at pale daylight. I suppose you know Rodney's gone. He packed his little suitcase and ran away. And that's why you're sitting here as if in mourning. Because you're going to miss Rodney's smiling face around the house. You can pretend it doesn't hurt you, but it does. It hurts me. Rodney doesn't respect you anymore. You'll never get him to come back to you again. We'll see. You keep prattling on about Rodney. But that's not the real reason you're sitting here. Why are you sitting here, Hannah? Because I couldn't sleep. Then you won't pretend that you're leaving the house yesterday afternoon with sleepwalking. The house was noisy. But with Rodney coming home early from his garage, banging doors, I heard you leave. Where did you go? I was restless. I went for a walk. <laughs> well, for a woman who's never been known to take a walk, I find that rather amusing. I felt like walking. Anna, isn't it time you told me what you said to Anne Colby? I'm worried about her. Yes, astonishing as it may seem, I'm worried about her and what she might do. When she left this house, Miss Rome, I could see how upset she was. But more important, Hannah, I could see how upset you were. Please, Martin, not now. Did she accept you 
As her mother? Yes, yes, she accepted me. Well, then what happened? Surely it was no problem for you to handle a highly emotional young girl. I handled it. Then why are you so upset? How did you explain your failure as a mother? Your decision to give up your child? I told her I hated her father. And what reason did you give? I had to justify it, why I deserted her. What did you say? I said that her father had been unfaithful to me and that's why I hated him. What else? Nothing else. Don't lie to me. All right, I said that he had been teaching art in a girl's school and that she was one of his pupils. You didn't name anyone. Hannah, tell me you didn't name anyone. You told her. You couldn't resist telling her. Yes, I told her. It was Catherine. He had a cheap, shoddy affair with your precious Catherine, and that's why I divorced him. You couldn't let it alone. Your hatred for Catherine made you name her. Yes, it made me name Catherine. The whole point, all these years, was to protect Catherine's name. Now, and Colby will go to Stephen. He'll be able to fit the last missing piece in the puzzle. It'll be all over for us. this happened at the bluff I I see that where the Weber boy was blinded why there do you suppose Anna what drove her there when you left the house in the afternoon where did you go where is he Ann Colby where then I told you I I told you, I went for a walk. I don't believe you. You didn't see Ann Corby after she left this house? No, no, I didn't. Then what else did you tell her while she was here? What else, Hannah, to account for this? Martin. It wouldn't have taken much, Hannah. You knew she was unstable, suggestible, destroying the image of her father that she loved. That could be enough. She left here believing me, and that's what you wanted. I didn't want her dead. Why did you have to pour your sick hatred into the ears of a neurotic girl? I had nothing to do with Anne's death. How do you know? How could you be so quick to absolve yourself of all blame? If you have guilt, Smarten, then you will have to bear them. Now that you have breathed your sigh of relief, you can afford the luxury of a few hypocritical tears. I didn't want her dead. Do you wish her back to life again? At the price of her learning the whole truth? And telling it? No. No, of course you wouldn't. She's gone now, Martin. Stephen will mourn her for a while, and then you'll forget. And you'll stop asking questions, and everything will be as it was before. What makes you so sure? And then go straight to Stephen from here. Everything may be as it was before, Hannah. But what a terrible cost.
was. Bring the car around to the front door at once. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. I'm not the police and I'm not Dr. Rossi. I'm Lee's brother and I want to know the truth. I really wish I could hurt you. It's about time somebody did. What makes you so certain? No one ever has. I swear to you, if you had any part in causing Anne's death, may heaven help you, you'll pay for it. <laughs>